the trap line. I hope you enjoy the adventure with us today. Here we go. Love. <laughs> Great to have a box villa for your, your gear in. So every time I go in, I grab a trap setter, piece of bait, and a trap, and then I go in. I have my lure on my pouch. So I'm good to go. So we're gonna go in here and have a look at this set. These are Martin tracks. The feet are always offset as they're walking along. Perfect, got a Got a Martin here. I can see tracks. There's probably another one around. So it's uh, perfect that I walked in with my trap, setters, and bait. Nice uh, male. Probably juvenile by the size of them. But I know for sure it's a male just by the size. And uh, this is what it's all about. You can check a lot of empty sets, but when you get to uh, one with something in it, it always kind of makes you smile a little bit. Well, nice dog fisher here. Not the perfect set for him, but uh, he did a good job. He's pretty fresh. I like to check my traps as often as I can. But at the same time, you got to be able to uh, justify being out here. You can't come for one animal. You have to make sure you have enough sets. So my set has a swivel in it, and you can see there's no twisting by the by the by the fisher. It's got a swivel on the end here. This is a 120 Super X, and uh, you can see this guy's head completely fills the trap. There's hardly any room there. So I prefer to use like a 160 or a 220 for Fisher. But this North Bay line I have here has both Martin and Fisher. So I try to set for both, but sometimes the animal doesn't care. Sometimes I know I miss some of the big dog Fishers because they don't like to stick their head in it. But in this case, I got pretty lucky today. I'm pretty happy.
Okay, so what I'm making here is a uh, combination Martin Fisher track trap. I'm going to make a uh, use a one uh, 160 size trap in a plastic pail, and it's, a, it's an adaptation that I've made over the years. I started off when I first came to the North Barrier area. I uh, used to catch fishers up north, but the way the numbers are way higher in here, and so I just developed this a set. So you can see I got a notch cut on the log and a flat spot. The flat spot is to put my pail on and then I screw it down with the screw gun, which I'll show you. But then it stops the bait from rolling down. I like that angle. That angle to me is almost the perfect angle to entice the fisher to come up your pole. I don't want them to go by. I want to catch every fisher that comes by and I want to catch them in a size trap that they're gonna, they're gonna uh, be not hesitant to go in. So that's why I'm trying 160s. So for this set, I cut a, a tree down, I notch it, then I, I drive a nail into it. Makes it nice and solid. I'm gonna put my pail, I've notched my pails already, and I pre-drilled holes in it. So that when I get it up, see how nice and flat that sits? That's the whole design of this set. Because it's flat like that, I don't have to worry about my bait tumbling out and setting off my trap. So that's an adaptation that I've made that works really good for me. I have a registered line, so I'm able to, to leave my sets out from year to year. Okay, so two there. I pre-drilled the back of my uh, box so I can put a screw in to hold it in the back. There, my box is nice and sturdy now. You can put more inside if you want. You can put another screw inside if you want, but otherwise it's fine for, for my taste. Then it's a matter of putting your bait in there. Sometimes I rub my pole a little bit. Nice, a nice fist sized chunk of bait. I've already nailed in a fence clip in the bottom, which allows me to quickly set up my trap. This is a 160 Super X. I'm just trying them out to see if I like them. Blooper number two. When I do this, I put the set up on the pole. I'm trying out a round trigger, I'm experimenting. There's my set. And again, I'm always really big I'm trying to avoid non-target catches. So you'll see me spending time putting on branches to try and put completely box, block the front of my box here a little bit. And I'll, and I'll actually push the branches down like that. So you can see, you can't really see it without getting right up to my set. And then the last thing I like to do is I add a call lure. Now you can, whatever call lure you like, something that is, uh, that causes enough smell so that the animals are, are gonna come to your set. And I like to put it, I'll, I'll sometimes take the back of a branch and I'll dip the bottle in it like this. So for me, a, a call lure, the job of a call lure is to get the animal over to investigate the set. So I don't put it inside the box, I put it 
out. I want it out and exposed. I want it calling out around the area to attract the fisher or the martin over to the set. And there you go. My, abdic my abdication of a, of a fisher set that I've kind of worked on for the last few years. It's, it's been a work in progress. But I like the box to be flat like that instead of being on an angle. And sometimes your bait will roll out on you. So you're trying to wire it in or whatever. This way here, it's nice and flat. When the animal gets caught, I try to keep them hanging behind the set, not on the ground. I hate to have an animal actually touch the ground because if you're not there fast enough sometimes, somebody else comes along and chews them up. So you try to avoid that by getting them to hang below the set like that. So today was a good run, Martin and a, and a Fisher. Um, some days you hit the jackpot, some days you don't. But uh, it's all about uh, doing things smartly and as efficiently as you can. Right on. Till next time, we'll talk later. Bye.